Hello and welcome to Glaswegian Geeks. We have a little horror, as you can tell from the title of this podcast, which... Do you have any quotes? No, but it'll come to me. Yes, okay, cool. Uh, if you hadn't guessed, it's just myself and Chris here today. Hello. Yes, and we are delving into a whole new nightmare. Freddy's Revenge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Bracket. Freddy's Revenge. Bracket, yellow buses, torment me now. Yeah. Like, that has genuinely scared me every time I've went to America and I've seen a yellow bus. I am terrified. Yeah, it's, it, is, it is genuinely your first kind of go-to with it. Uh, it did kind of actually, yeah. This is, I like this. I like the strong opener on this one. Yeah. It is a really strong opener, actually. It's, to be fair, the first one, apart, well, well, apart from the first one, maybe, but it actually feels like you're in, you genuinely are watching a nightmare. Uh, Whereas I think the more slicker they got, they kind of forgot, well, these films are about dreams yeah. and about nightmares, hence the title. <laughs> <laughs> so they kind of, oh, I mean, look at that subtle, the teeth in the bus and everything. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's a brown opener and uh, Freddy's Revenge, which I want to say it was made a year, it was a directly, it was like 1985. It was a straight after the success of Nightmare on Elm Street. They obviously turned out a sequel straight away. Yes, because New Line is the house that Freddy built. Exactly. And they knew the cash cow. Though I think this was one of the... This was the first, this one and the third one were the ones that then were funded very much by Warner Brothers as well. I think Warner Brothers pumped a lot of money into them before obviously Warner Brothers took over New Line, which they have done now. But um, they pumped a lot of money into these, hence why the budget in this one seems a lot more impressive compared to... There is a um, lot more special effects and uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 1 was very indie horror. Yeah, I mean... And and the look and feel of it. Let's talk about the styrofoam mum, really. Yeah. Styrofoam mum. Yeah. Uh, Whereas this one, there's proper matte paintings, there's models, there's everything. Uh, it's quite exciting. Look, look at that. I mean, that's there's modelling going on there. There's yeah. everything. And as we've discussed before, this, for me personally, is the best that Freddy ever looks in the franchise. Mm, I would maybe say three myself, but mm. I, I, I do like the subtle differences in the makeup of uh, Freddy's Revenge compared to the first one. He looks mean in this yeah, one. He looks, he looks scary, and I think from third one onwards is when he becomes a bit more cartoonesque. Yeah, gets a bit more refined, a bit more contoured uh, as the films go on. I think as well. Yeah, uh, more, more like a giant stretch mark on his face instead of burns. You know, that's that's how I've always seen it. More Katie Piper. Oh, um, sorry, I cannot. I, can't, I cannot stand Katie Piper. Uh, but. Uh, speaking of clothes. <laughs> I know, yeah. Hey. Uh, and also, you're not going to hate it, I also think one of the best ones he looks in is Freddy vs. Jason. Uh, yeah, because I, they play I, I on them, they play on two aspects of Freddy. You've got the, the dream Freddy, which looks really, really mean, and not dissimilar to this makeup, I think, but then when you've got the demon version of Freddy as well, which is totally nice. different. Yeah, it's amazing how he's, his ears change and everything. But I also like them, actually, I'm going to just go through, but I actually like the makeup in New Nightmare as well, New because Nightmare's they fantastic. totally up their game with that one. The glove as well in New Nightmare. The bone glove, it's yes. just so cool. And the, uh, the claw on the thumb as well. Yeah, off oh, Fu Manchu's. Uh, I forgot about the cereal. Oh, Fu Manchu's. Mm. Fu Man Fingers, is that what she's looking for? Fu yeah. Man Fingers. Um, it's like a day at Kevin Spacey's house. Um, oh! It's been a while, I've got lots of these, by the way. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> for sweaty, Jesse. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, let's get into it while we're seeing it, you know. Sweaty Jesse. Are you watching gay porn or are you watching Nightmare on Elm Street 2? Who knows? <laughs> There's a fine line. Uh, yeah, it's quite... I don't know if we should just go for the quick synopsis of Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Very quick. Very quick. You, you need to... I need to, I need to get it out. I need to get it out. Uh, I'm like, come on, come oh, on. Oh. Uh, sorry, it's just these... Oh, the honestly. Boys the boss and... Uh, so, basically, Nightmare on Elm Street 2, I think it's set, like... It's like five years after... Yeah. The first one, and there's a new family that's moved into the Thompson house from the first one, and uh, basically shit starts to go down. Jesse, who it's so this is one of the very first eight films in the eighties as well, where you've got a male protagonist and not a female kind of aspect of kind of the leader of the horror film. So Jesse is um, the son, and he basically starts obviously having nightmares. His room is what Nancy's room was, and basically. It's more of a kind of possession movie that Freddy starts to possess him uh, to do his bidding. That is quite, um, a, good, quite a good concept. Yeah. Instead of just going after people in their nightmares. Yeah. Like, almost like uh, 
he's finding a doorway to like s- to come back, you know. They never fully explain why, yeah, but they just kind of all of a sudden he. So Jesse's like this kind of weird conduit for Freddy, uh, and obviously there's a little bit of a death path that seems to follow him. What what do you know what reminds me of uh, Freddy vs Jason, where he's like implanting the seeds in Jason, to yeah, get his own stuff for him to get the fear up. So obviously they, at this point they know that teenagers are going missing being killed and stuff and whatever but they don't know obviously who it is so with jesse doing his bidding possibly making him more powerful and stuff yeah because the, these the kids in this one aren't the elm street children because the elm street children technically died out with nancy and stuff like that so these are uh new kids and basically the, kids the new kids in elm street that that would be like a band and a half um so they're basically yeah the new kids and basically the only way that freddie obviously seems to get access to them is by using jesse which we seem to be giving it a lot more plot than it actually tells you uh because that's really kind of what happens so and they do archery at school i mean who does archery at school uh so yeah so jesse is freddie he kind of comes in and out of them to pardon the pun um and it's basically like a battle for control jesse's soul kind of thing uh and that's really it it's a big gay film really it's a huge <laughs> gay 80s film that is not subtle it's as subtle as watching his gay porn you might as well watch gay porn side to side it's like the same thing it's yeah as got older i mean I remember, as we're saying i remember seeing this when i was a kid and even remember as a kid i was like oh this is a bit weird like that i think the scene you always remember is the the weird shower scene with the yeah, gym teacher yeah, yeah. and the the kind of weird gay leather bar that yeah. he takes him to. Uh, but then there's so much that's not less subtle than that. There's lots of stuff about Jesse telling people that there's someone inside of him wanting to get out. Uh, when Jesse feels he's possessed for the first time, the first place he runs to is his best friend slash nemesis, his bedroom, who seems to have weird leather sheets which i always notice it's kind of weird she and goes to his house clean, well they're wiped clean so uh and there's wrestling going on right now with a jock strap on right now I means to be forgiven if you described this film and didn't tell you it was never Elm street you'd be like why are we watching gay porn really why are we describing gay porn yes yes says any friday night really <laughs> um and yeah i mean it's definitely a really weird reaction to the kind of hiv epidemic it's got this thing but i don't think it's personally i don't think it's been negative about the it's not being homophobic i don't think Uh, and now looking at that in hindsight i don't think it is Uh, i genuinely think that it's telling a very different side to the story things were coded back in the day and it happened a lot in the 50s where they would code things in films to be fair in the 80s this came out and a lot of people didn't seem to question it i think as we now become more savvy and a bit more aware they denied it for years as well the writers denied it for years that that's what they were doing and they kind of now fully admit that they were doing and the guy mark Patton, who plays jesse in this was openly gay and i think it's that way that they picked him intentionally to he is your scream queen if you pardon the pun he is the scream queen of that this movie and it's he screams, quite a lot. He screams a lot in it as well uh and it's that way that he is your He's your feminine role, really, in this film. And it's just basically he can't seem to process what's going on with him. Heterosexuality does win at the end of the day, though, as it always does in these films. <laughs> uh, there's too many shots of topless men in this film. It's really weird. I feel uncomfortable. It's like, well, it is like watching Cape Horn with you in the room. It's really strange. I think growing up, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 2, I don't, I don't really know what it was about it. But it really wasn't one of my favourites. I don't think it's anybody. I, I, I don't know if it was maybe just because it didn't have any recognisable characters. You know, like, well, saying that, your Halloweens and Friday 13s had basically a rolling cast changing from... Yeah, ca- they, were just, from they were just archetypes. It was that way. It's like someone will be there. You could watch the first five minutes and go, oh, here's your final girl, here's the bitchy girl, here's this person. You all, you can distinguish them straight away. This one kind of puts your brain in gear a wee bit and you have to think. That actually, the only things that are familiar about this film are Freddy and the house. Yeah. That is it. They're like and the main the characters. Hell of a lot different. It's been re- 
done because obviously yeah like uh, there's a scene where Jesse saying to his dad like he you know the history of the house now and stuff and like oh why was it on uh, sale so long and how did you get it for such a low price I went oh because we, we just got it at a low price yeah really nothing oh, to do with the murders <laughs> uh, well they kind of ding it and they also they, uh, people say that it's nothing to do with obviously they're not going to say it, it's Freddie they kind of say that some women went crazy and locked her daughter in there and the women died yeah. uh, in that way that it seemed to be but um that's how they kind of try and get away with it but um it, yeah, like we actually see more of the house and stuff this time instead of the first film you know that like in a shot you see a bit of the garden yeah like you, you never i never actually knew that there was a garden there the entire time obviously the front garden when well, the mum had the trestle she took the trestles down yeah because obviously glenn could climb up them uh, and do so there was roses dirty, dirty. and do well do the dirty as much as glenn could and he's cropped up mm. now looking at them all maybe the 80s was just hella gay and we just kind of didn't realize gay horror movies gay horror movies pretty much uh and we see a lot more of the basement in this one as yes. well yes uh but then it kind of doesn't really focus on actually a lot of the, this doesn't really focus on this house as much it's all to do with the bo- oh that weird boiler room Sorry, that just came oh, back to yeah, me. The, the boiler the one room that seems to be factory? in the fuck end of nowhere. And it's not even a boiler room. It's less like... It's like a factory. It's, it's like an island. It's like a huge, huge... Yeah, it's like Terminator 2 at the end. Yeah. And it's like, I don't... I think they're playing fast and loose with their Freddy knowledge there. Because I think that's... Don't know if that's where Freddy took them. Maybe he did. It was kind of isolated. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I always forget about that strange, huge boiler room thing at the end. Uh, so, yeah. It kind of takes you out of the context of... Yeah, it's like the the bastard child of the Halloween uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. It's yeah, the kind of the Halloween three. They were trying something completely different, and yeah, it might necessarily have failed at the time. But again, I think a lot of people are now coming to it yeah. with the fresh eyes and realizing that it's a bit more smarter than the sequ- other sequels that followed it. Yeah, I'd say. yeah. I'd I'd say the only sequels that are fairly decent are two and three. Looking back. Because four, four was good, five was okay, six was. Eh. I didn't even say five was okay. I really like four. I really do. I think at the time I really liked four, and now I really like four still. I think it's kind of where Freddy kind of comes into his own. It's almost like you're watching two different trilogies. That's yeah, the way you look yeah. at it. So you got one, two, and three, which are kind of like this kind of amazing trilogy, and then you've got. Uh, the next ones which kind of hit into a new one whereas the fourth one takes you into new characters uh, when you've got alice and then just the fifth one is it's the the kid the dream child it's just yeah. oh, so stupid i know uh, yeah and the sixth one is just like oh we've got to end this somehow uh let's just go completely Freddy's pop gonna, culture like, kill everyone yeah. in such a funny manner let's and... just be pop culture oh look he's dressed as the the wicked witch of the east oh yeah. look roseanne's in it oh look alice cooper's in it johnny depp's back in it and it's just like it is a bit like oh we've got to end this blah blah blah, blah. let's just do it in 3d and it's not that good um and then it comes back into its own again with new nightmare yeah. uh but yeah it's it's yeah it's it's a strange sequel it's a really strange sequel but again it's very much the product of its time and also very much the product of how to if you're writing a sequel very quickly after a film is successful Blair Witch 2 let's just talk about that because that's that's a very much a product yeah. of maybe spend two years writing a sequel don't and not two minutes try and cash coffee. up yeah don't try and cash into it straight away just to get your money because uh, it's still relevant but um yeah it is. It is a. I mean, it's a strange film. The parents. Oh, the dad so does my fucking head in. It's yeah. It's just who is the guy is really 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 funny and <gasps> this is the bit where he dances in the bedroom, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, such a good moment. Uh, and so he blows his cork. He blows his cork. So you're literally about to watch Jesse, who is now not allowed to go out. Uh, so he has to unpack his room. Which, to be fair, all that stuff in those tiny little boxes could fit in one box. But yeah. you know, so he puts on Kathy Dennis, which is the <laughs> one of the most gayest things you can do in the A's, and decides to uh, to unpack slash dance to a song called "Touch Me" all night long. Close yeah. brackets uh, and wears shades and shuts his drawer with his ass. There's so many bad things. Here's the thing: I'm 31. When I'm in the kitchen 
and I'm getting something out the drawer, say a knife or a fork, I will pelvic thrust that drawer, drawer shot if I can get away with it. Okay. Uh, oh, those, can we talk about these these Lady Gaga glasses? I will not do that, though. Yeah, I will, I will, not, I will <laughs> wear those Lady Gaga glasses, which, I won't lie, I kind of want. Uh, how do you see out of those? Um, so, I mean... <sighs> Even as a kid, right, <laughs> I knew, and disclaimer, I'm allowed to say this word, I knew that he was a big old faggot. I knew that, <laughs> right? Even as a kid, he's embarrassed, but he's acting like he's been caught masturbating. And you know what? I think I would rather be masturbating than get caught doing that, <laughs> because that is just mortifying. How can, what's her face, whose name Lisa. is now Lisa? How can Lisa is just not like, mm. and I also think the only reason he's going out with Lisa is because she kind of looks at like Meryl Streep and us gays love Meryl Streep. <laughs> <laughs> so I really kind of think that is, you know. Oh, and that, that's the thing. It doesn't, it does get with her and stuff, but it doesn't really go all the way. His big Freddy, his big Freddy tongue gets yeah. in the way. Uh, Freddy's in the, in the cabana. Freddy's a, uh, uh, But in the cabana, walk how gay is that sentence though? It's like, how, did, how did you lose your virginity? Well, I shagged this girl in a cabana. I mean, <laughs> no. And Jock, like, Fred, Freddy's Jock saving him again. from uh, heterosexuality. <sighs> yeah, and the... Again, Robert England, I mean, I've listened to interviews with the two of them now, like when they talk about it. Robert England says that he was, there's a thing called Probe. There's a game <laughs> called Probe. Uh, there is, a, Robert England says that he, yeah, so for, yeah, Freddie kind of seduces him. And yeah, at this point, they find Nancy's diary. Uh, and why was Nancy writing the diary? He, here's when the thing, when here's did Nancy the thing. have the time to write this diary? The, the house was renovated, it was left empty for God knows how long. But they forgot Nancy's diary. But they forgot the diary. Like, clearly, that, the room, hold yeah. on, hold on, I'm looking at this room here. It, it doesn't really look the same. It looks bigger. Maybe because the bed, no. There seems to be an extra window. Yeah. Uh, the bed's diagonal instead of, like, bang centre facing yeah. the door. And no, it's, and no, it's completely actually, different because Nancy's. Oh God, we're talking about the architecture of this house. I know. Uh, Nancy's <laughs> bedroom door was completely on the left-hand side of that wall. Yes. Uh, so it is different because that what well, that's uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But again, when did Nancy have the right time to write this diary? I know. Well, my friends are getting slaughtered, but dear diary. Yes, um, there's a strange man in yeah. the dreams. He's after me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a strange film, this one. Uh, it's a, it is a really good film, though. I mean, I'm not saying that. It's kind of... I mean, there are other things I would rather watch yeah. than this. Pardon me. But um, it's good for the experience. There's a lot of Jesse writhing about sweating. Yeah. A lot more than I remember as well. <laughs> I think I think your uh, gay subtlety is... It's uh, not subtle. I mean, <laughs> I mean, there's a difference between subtext and text. This is just text. <laughs> this is just basically, they might as well every two seconds superimpose Jesse's gay <laughs> on the screen. On the screen. <laughs> yeah. Just in case it wasn't subtle. Hey, kids, AIDS is dangerous. Like, write things like that. They might as well just keep doing it. Uh, though I love that bit. Oh, uh, the vinyl, that, that breaks my heart. Vinyl. It depends. If I don't know. But if it's Kathy Dennis, <laughs> then you're just like, no, I'm actually all right for that. <laughs> like, I'm good for please. Kathy. Put them all there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put all my Kathy Dennis, my, my huge <laughs> Kathy Dennis collection. Um, Please tell me you don't have a Kathy Dennis collection. I have best of Kathy Dennis. Oh no! Have you got what? that on? In, on vinyl? Touch me was one yeah. of her big singles. Well, I was just asking if it yeah, was, it was oh my god, one of her big singles. Uh, I can also remember an episode of Beverly Hills Nine Hundred Two One Zero where Kathy Dennis was the guest DJ of the school radio show. Oh. That's how big Kathy Dennis was. Big, just accept it. Yeah, okay, uh, Alex. She was big in the late eighties. She was kind of cute. She was ginger. Guys love that. Gay guys? No, just guys. Do the guys love redheads? No. And the girl? Really? No. Ginger? No, but red? Yes. Okay. She was red. She might Gin- have masked ginger by dying that bit redder, <laughs> but... Uh, nah. But all gay men love Julianne Moore. Yeah, that is okay. an actual fact. That's you could Straight men also? But it's a thing. You could ask every gay man, who uh, Julianne Moore, and they'll just say nothing but nice things about her. It's weird. It's... It's like we're programmed to like her. Uh, but, and you just Julianne Moore in general is just good. Yes. But anyway, we, we digress from yes. from this. From going to Ginger's to Julianne Moore. Uh, so yeah, it's it's hard to say. I mean, it's, for what, they, I mean, they very could have nearly killed the franchise with this very quickly. Uh, but I don't think it stopped it not taking money. I think it did really, really well at the time. Uh, but it 
yeah, it could have very nearly killed that franchise. Yeah. Um, it, has, it has a very dark undertone to this film. Uh, again, there's not... Freddy, this is pre Freddy becoming an actual pop culture, pop culture icon. icon, yeah. And it's that way that there is a lot of kind of Freddy's still quite sinister, he's still a bit scary looking, and he not only likes girls called Nancy, he likes boys called Jesse. It's maybe, Fre- maybe Freddy's, maybe but Freddy's game to be fair. Freddy did well, Freddy did abduct, and I use that with the kind of question quotation marks girls and boys. So I think maybe that's something they done i guess oh, you know how they never ever officially say he's a pedophile but i think yeah yeah in the remake they do they not do. that i'm claiming that if you're a pedophile that makes you bisexual pedophilia and sexuality are very different things i'm just clearing this up before people react to this uh but i think he's an equal opportunity toucher molester yeah yeah um i man. think i think this movie as well uh Later on in the series with uh, micro dreams and stuff, that keep bringing those that, micro dreams back I know, into but this. if you look at this, it's, it's actually quite a monumental movie. Like the scene in the basement, and Jesse like sees Freddy, turns around, he falls over, and Freddy's gone. But there's smoke coming out the furnace. Yeah, like maybe things like that. That's like little micro naps, kind of like maybe Freddy doing something to him like yeah i mean i think it's that this one it seems to be more he's definitely playing with um jesse's head if you pardon the pun um sorry i'm just reading that book that says clearly says health on it and it's like what are you studying health <laughs> um it's yeah he's, he's toying with jesse uh and there's obviously these kind of weird things and obviously we'll get to this conversation about the teacher sequence right yes so, yes there's this kind of weird sadomasochist well you don't know this at the time he's just like a gym teacher and he kind of seems to have it out for jesse a little bit i think that's a stereotypical uh gym teacher thing they're a hard ass they're pushing the students he's an absolute prick yeah you know just faculty like robert yeah, patrick yeah it's yeah and then there's this kind of strange sequence that uh Oh, yeah, because he makes fun of... He's got to stick up his ass. Yeah, they make fun of that. <laughs> he gets caught doing it. Uh, and basically, there's a really weird sequence where he... Jesse has this, what seems to be a dream, and he's walking about in his pyjamas. Is it Yeah, pyjamas? pyjamas. And it's raining, and then he seems to go to this bar, which seems to be an S&M bar. Doesn't necessarily say it's a gay S&M bar, because there is women in it. Uh, but then he as he's about to take a drink he meets his gym teacher who's all in all rubber gear and then he makes him go to the gym with him and makes him do laps yeah surely if like you're a teacher you'd be like right mon you home uh, no and then no, you're gonna seems do to be laps. setting him up for something because when jesse's he tells him to hit the shower you see him pulling out ropes and stuff like that so you're implying that obviously jesse's about to get you know, fiddled. Uh, it's about to be full Kevin Spacey. It's about to be full Kevin Spacey. Uh, and <laughs> then he gets killed. And he gets killed in a weirdly homoerotic way. Yes. Where he gets ropes, dragged, and then gets slapped with a towels on his butt. Uh, to be fair, for a man who's clearly in his 40s, and I don't know if it's the same man, very perky bum. Uh, I don't know if the butt double got on there, but, and then, I can be these birds. Uh, and then, uh, <laughs> he kills him and then it makes it look like jesse did it because jesse's wearing the gloves yes. uh so it's this idea that yeah jesse's killing people and freddie's using them for that uh i don't know if you've ever seen the original makeup test for this bird but the bird was supposed to be this crazy like kind of demon bird no and then they took it out because they realized it looked really really fake um so yeah everything's reacting in the house one of the birds has just killed another bird and then it explodes for no reason yeah and uh, Jesse's dad logically thinks that Jesse put a firecracker inside the bird and that made it explode. See, you kind of saw it before it blew up there. There was like a weird demon bird that had a big, big head and stuff like that. Yeah, um, almost like the Freddy head and the uh, yeah, bird one. Yeah, so they kind of do that. Uh, sorry, just because this is on the background. Uh, so is that a thing that Jesse's parents aren't kind of accepting of what's going on and stuff like that? They think Jesse's on drugs. Yeah. Uh, Never jumped to the conclusion they might be gay, though. <laughs> Which, you know. I know. What, what are you on, son? Like, oh, well, cock. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I would like to be on cock, thanks. Uh, 
ironically, and burn victim cock. Yay. Did you know that Michael? This is a real tangent, right? <laughs> but appreciate this tangent. Yes. Did you know that in Neverland, the ranch, mm -hmm. Michael Jackson, he had his own burns ward. Yeah. He had his own hospital in the Neverland Ranch, like with a full medical team, but it had its own specialised burns ward. That's very specific. Yeah, it's really strange, isn't it? That's, and that's I only know that because weird. of John Waters, the director, was talking about it once, and he gives us a great analogy, because apparently, like, where Neverland was, because it's quite isolated, though obviously there were some people who did live around it, and if anything did happen, I mean, they, were, they could go visit the, the, yeah. the hospital ward. But can you imagine, like, getting a really bad burn as a kid? And then being dragged to the Neverland. Where are you taking me? I'm taking you to the Neverland match. Steve like, Jackson. Oh, he's going to sort your burns out. Are you? <laughs> he's going to sort your burns out. Um, so yeah, it, it always it is a very a, a very specialised burns ward. But then Michael Jackson was quite burned, wasn't he? He got really bad the burn during yeah. the Pepsi advert. Uh, so I don't know if that was the case. On this lightning explodes through the house. Yeah, because um, why not? Yeah. I think they were just trying this film is to this. add oh, more. Here we go. They're trying to add more to the character and the yeah. mythos of Freddy, so... Yeah, here's the weird gay bar bit. Yeah, because... It's not a gay bar. Wal walking uh, down the street in your pyjamas is completely natural. After lightning strikes After lightning through the window strikes and blows up And the it's torrential yeah. rain. I mean, imagine... I mean, it's... Don's place. Don. Dom? Dom? Don. 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 No, Don. Those Dom's LEDs does was, look like Dom's. If it was Dom's place, that would I'd understand the context a lot more. See, there's women there. Yeah, and so, they're hanging around guys, so, yeah. Oh, uh, there's men kissing. Yep. I never noticed that before. Maybe. God bless Blu-ray. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for the 4K restoration, you'll see yeah, something else yeah, in the background. Thing, I'm like cruising. <laughs> I mean, cruising the famous film that if you pay attention in the background during all the sequences of Al Pacino, there is actual hardcore sex going on in the background. Oh. Cruising, a film I would recommend anyone to watch. It's, no, it's really, really good. It is a great, great movie. But, it is, yeah, it was notorious for that, that it was all this kind of hardcore kind of gay sex going on in the background while they were filming it. Um... But if you ever want to see Al Pacino dressed in leather doing poppers, it's one of your experience. It's but it's a good movie. I totally praise that movie. That's the guy who owns New Line. Uh, is it? Yeah, Robert Shea. Wow. Yeah. So that was just a kind of like throwaway. Yeah. Uh, he oh, I need someone. Few, he appears in quite a few of them, but yeah, they thought that would be the perfect bit for him to do to play this kind of weird leather daddy who works behind the bar. He's wearing eye makeup as well. I know, I was going to say he's very Frankenfurter. Can we just discuss, why would you give a glass to I know, a like, beer? Like, for, no, for a beer though. I'll, I'll give you like a whiskey glass for a beer. I mean, come on. Maybe that's, that's how SMM clubs. Clearly not a gay bar. Get a fancy glass. And look at that, I'm just going to have a sip of beer. And look, he's got a fucking, the gym teacher has such a leather vest. creepy smile on his face. Like, Oh, he's wearing jeans. Oh, he's okay. Wearing, okay, I thought he was wearing his full pyjamas. I thought he was as well. Maybe that's just a shirt. Maybe it's the 80s and we've just assumed it's pyjamas. Yeah. It is very patterned. Yeah, maybe, well, yeah, actually. Um, that might be his going out clothes. Going out to the, gate, the weird s &M bars. Of, yeah, just like, oh, of Springwood. Woke we'll up in the middle of the night. I mean, Where are you going? Knew, but who knew that Springwood had a gay scene, really? <laughs> or an s &M scene? And here comes this weird... I mean, it's just genuinely so weird, this moment. As a kid, I won't lie, this made me feel a bit funny. Because it's like... Oh, I love horror movies, and something really strange is happening. One that makes me feel a bit funny. That's the thing. See, until you said about the ropes, I never actually thought about it. I thought maybe, yeah. oh, he's uh, say that's whatever night, say a Friday night, he's getting stuff ready for no. the Monday morning. He's getting nope. ready for something, and it's not. But then also the irony is this: is this symbolism when all the balls attack him? Is it symbolism? I mean. It's also, has the coach got a tattoo under his eye? Is he got all Yeah, it looks like it. Does he, I've never, does he have that normally? Oh, no, he does oh, have he's a t-shirt tan. No, he's got, no, it's not, it's a farmer's tan. He's got the worst farmer's tan ever. But then again, the guy who plays this guy, I kind of love him. He's in a lot of films and I yeah. kind of like, he's amazing in Starship Troopers. Um, I mean, again, the effects in this bit are really, really good and it's just such a weird scene. I mean, it really is. I mean, I can talk about it non-stop, but it's just that way you're like, I don't under... But he is literally getting f balls are attacking him. I think that's not so that's supposed to be subtle. Yeah, balls in or the exploding. face. Balls are exploding in his face. <laughs> I mean, it's, again, not subtle. Uh, so basically, as a young gay child watching this, it, I don't think it encouraged me to want to be gay. Not that you but want to be assisted. gay, but... 
I don't think it assisted either. I mean, I, to be fair, I mean, I'm not really into the S&M scene. Maybe this is maybe this is why. Maybe yeah, maybe this movie ruined it for maybe you. Maybe ruined S&M for me. Damn you. Damn uh, Freddy. <laughs> damn you, Freddy. When will I learn? Um, so it's just so out of context and kind of me. But then there's a lot of film. To be fair, right? There is a lot of films at that kind of time that we're kind of doing not to some. If you ever watched the film Fright Night, Fright Night yes. is not weirdly subtle and it's kind of. So yeah, I mean, Fright Night isn't so, uh, and it has kind of a, but he uses it really, really well. Whereas this, I mean, come on, no, that's the sequence. I think it's a butt double. I think it's a butt double. That's a younger man's butt, I would say. Yeah. Uh, sorry, let's we're going on a tangent. This bit is hella creepy though, when all the smoke fills and then all of a sudden Freddy appears. Yeah. It's really, really well done, and it's really, 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 really creepy. And again, if I remember right, the effects in this bit are really good when he's he's. He knifes his back. Yeah, like um, the one thing that I will always take away, like, is when Freddy's walking towards him. You, you, you know right away that's not Robert England. But is it? Is it the guy playing Jesse dresses him? Because I think it might be. Oh, that might actually be a good shout. Because be the bit you saw the fade and it faded and it was like, I think it is supposed to be. There's some sequence where he's playing him. Yeah. Because it's this idea. But then this could be a total analogy if it wasn't for the end of this movie. Like, obviously, when Freddy all of a sudden really does appear and kind of kills a lot of people, I think it's this idea that someday, I think most killers, kind of reading a lot about them, they kind of have those moments where they come out of their own body and stuff like that. Whereas Jeffrey Dahmer always said that as well. He always believed that he, he'd never remember killing people. Yeah. He would get into a situation and then all of a sudden he would wake up the next day and then there'd be a dead person lying next to him and he wouldn't remember it. Uh so I think it's idea that something's taken over him. That would have been a very interesting plot to do. But deep down, you just want Freddy to appear, and he does. He does appear at the end. He appears at a pool party, which is what you want, and comes up with one of the best lines ever in the whole franchise, which is the whole, you're all my children now. That's a good line. Uh, which I think a lot of these kind of lines that were all Robert England kind of came up with off the cuff as well. But yeah. It's, it's definitely a... a a creepy creepy take because you've got this young boy who's just new to town and he's getting basically thrown in at the fucking deep end being traumatized uh his dad's a dick you know Total dick. uh he likes a girl at school but does he it doesn't do really in yeah. well does he like, like does he like meryl streep jr i think he does is she his last ditch attempt at saving at saving himself and it's that i think that is where the analogy is in this film i think it's this idea that this guy he de- desperately just wants to fit in in every aspect but there's something inside him that's not wanting to fit in and basically freddy manipulates that in a sense and whatever it is and then basically um and that's yeah but it, again it ends that kind of very everything goes very i hate to use words like heteronormative but that's a word it goes very kind of heteronormative and then the girl saves him at the end because yeah. the girl literally does save him at the end she basically oh, tells him that she loves him and then basically in a really great sequence where like freddy falls apart literally and literally because jesse comes out of him in a weird way if you kind of think of it and then all of a sudden everything's fine or is it <laughs> um and it ends in a very ambiguous way and is that an analogy that whatever's inside jesse is always going to be there because ironically no it's not him it's the friend at the handbird side of ironically it's always going to be inside of him no matter what yeah. that is just maybe freddy found a new he thing f- to take over freddy. he's fingered by freddy <laughs> um so as a sequel it's a bit of a strange one it's a really is it's i mean i give it props for being bold it's very bold it's very different to a lot of I mean friday the 13th two, part two is just a rehash of friday the 13th then yeah. halloween 2 is just a rehash of halloween this is like you know what we're going to give you something different so they did yeah and another and another back. uh wide scene of jesse there's a lot of scenes of jesse in his pants sweating like they say that the house feels hotter uh well definitely is hotter if you're that way inclined i'm not that way inclined <laughs> i i like my man to look a bit more like a man. Jesse is a bit. Jesse's, a, a, boy. Jesse's a twink. Jesse's a pure twink. To be fair, <laughs> let's be honest. Um, and again, Mark Patton, who plays Jesse in this, 
he is doing his own i think he's done it and i don't think it's i think it's just getting completed he's done his own documentary which is actually called scream queen and it's all about him kind of being kind of gay in hollywood and this role and everything how this kind of helped him come out i also think he's uh hiv positive and it's talking about oh. like his hiv kind of stuff and all that as well but i love the fact that this film i mean even last year they all did a huge reunion of them all like uh Lisa and Grady and Robert England, they all did a big reunion uh, for like uh, conventions because I think they now realise this film has its own place uh, in the franchise. They now embrace the kind of the weird queer subtext to it, uh, which is kind of awesome. And it, I think it still does like tours of the a lot of kind of gay and lesbian stuff as well. All because right, they're totally they're totally going with it now, which is kind of good because a film like this you could totally like, like I say, it doesn't come across homophobic at all. I mean, I mean, there's plenty of films you would watch and go you know what, I am more than offended by this, but this doesn't, this it genuinely comes across like a weird coming out story that has a man who appears in your dreams and kills people. Kills kids. Well, they're not mm. kids in this. They're teenagers. Yeah. But deep down, we don't like kids. So it's we, we can relate to that. Uh, but I think it is. It's, yeah, it's a good... It's a weird one. Again, I can't, get, I can't say it's good or bad. I can only say you've kind of got to see it to believe it's it. It's different. It's you've got to see it to believe it. And let's, it's... let's let's take a look at all the nightmares, uh, and we'll probably do this throughout each one, comparing them to the rest. First one, very dark, very indie style. This one, you can see that it's a good bit more money chucked into it, and it pays off. The special effects look better mm. and stuff. The story's a little bit different. Third one. Uh, our original hero's back. Mm-hmm. She's here to help a new breed of teenagers. And they're cool. Yeah, they are cool as fuck. And has one of the best rock oh, tunes best, ever. Yes. Um, yeah, and then basically sets up the next series of the franchise by bringing in when it kind of moves Kirsten on to, to that dreadful Kirsten yes. uh, in part four. And then bringing in the new characters, which are really, really cool. Uh, and I always feel Alice was completely underused because Alice is Alice has got and potential. and she doesn't even get a death scene. Who Alice? But she doesn't die. Or does she? Because in six, I survives. know five. But then, oh yeah, they just kind oh, of aye, Alice. Aye, who? Did, yeah, I mean it's like, that way. Oh, we'll just does forget. She, does she just forget Freddy? Does she just move on? Yeah, she just doesn't and no one bothers. Like, oh, we've given you these two movies to go. And she's the lead in two movies, which yes. is quite rare for to happen in horror films. Well, well right. look at this. Yeah. Like, they never went back to Nancy Day, uh, Until Nightmare, Nightmare 3. Tomorrow. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then, yeah, they just kind of seem to forget about Alice. Alice. Though, in the sequence in New Nightmare, where, Nan- not Nancy, but Heather Langenkamp's husband after he dies, if you look at that funeral sequence, it is a lot of the cast yeah, of all the originals, because yeah. uh, I think Alice is there as well, and they're all there. Uh, which is kind of cool when they make reference to them all. Um, it really annoys me when they refer to him as Fred Krueger. Why did they Why? refer to him as Fred? Well, where uh, does the Freddy come from then? It's like, yeah, it's a weird one. Maybe it was a kind of like a thing to like make him cool, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, Freddy, like, oh, Frederick Krueger, <laughs> the Springwood Slasher. Oh, that's yeah. scary. Like Fred Krueger. Yeah, yeah, Freddy Krueger. Like. I think Fred that, is creepy. Yeah. But Fred. You're Fred. Fred and Daddy. Fred Freddy Fred Daddy. And Daddy. Daddy. Yeah, because he says that in this one you're all my children, so Daddy Kruger. Oh. That you're, t- <laughs> you're, taking it to, you're taking it to a whole different level of gay porn now. Uh excuse me, uh people are fucking creating fan fiction on the new Pennywise, so I to be fair that is kinda of funny. That kinda of weird that weird you, does that not weird you out though, that there's all these people pure yeah. standing over like Aye, like people, that 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 gives me the fear that people people think, are fucked. People are genuinely oh, fucked, and you can't even blame it on the drugs that the parents done. It's the drugs that they're doing, and it's not the fact that they're saying that that guy is like out of Pennywise makeup. Is like, yeah, actually, yeah, he's actually an attractive, attractive guy. Uh, but it's nope. They want Pennywise. Pennywise. To fuck them. That's weird. I know. Would you want Freddy to fuck you? Freddy. Yeah. No. no. You well, fuck you up. Finger. You wouldn't want fingered off him, definitely. Odd. I mean, you'd remember that. Yeah. Uh, oh, aye, for years. No. I mean, I don't get it. I mean, no. It's like... I mean, I get... I can understand there's people in the world that, like, are attracted. 
connected to killers I mean, there's all those people that totally like fancy serial killers and like well uh who was it uh an actress in the uk get married to bronson yeah yeah like yeah. like that's like romanticizing like yeah. bad I, bad I, men I you know like, he is he's quite charming though he comes across charming in the books in a kind of weird way uh but it's it's yeah it's a strange one examine your life choices start up that's not even stay up that's start I know. up um examine your life choices find a man do something i mean don't i mean pennywise come on i know i, mean, I know weird. i know um not even no no not even no there's not even michael myers no i can't even i can't <laughs> see it it's like just fancy real people don't but that's basically saying i want someone to kill me and i want no it's mm. weird I, mean, I do like the idea that people are trying to make Pennywise and the Babadook like a power gay couple. Oh, yes. That's one of my favourite things. But it's um, the Babadook, just the Babadook in general. So it's just, I think that's really funny. Babashook is one of my favourite things to say to people. <laughs> um, but let's facts. Should we go on a bit facts about this movie? Yes, do yes. Do you have facts about this movie? Uh, well, let's talk about the Never Sleep Again uh, documentary on it. Yes. It's like... When we spoke about the first nightmare, and you said, "Oh, the second one's got so many gay overtones," and I was like, "Ah, what?" And I was like, "Yeah." So I watched it, and yeah, they outright mention it in that, and it's a very fresh set of eyes. You know, like you've looked at something for years, and that glass ceiling's just broke over your head. Yeah, I mean, I mean that is a genuinely great documentary, and I think. I like that they're doing that with a lot of kind of horror franchises now and they're kind of breaking them down and getting all the old cast to talk about them and do all that kind of stuff. And it is, I mean, yeah, I mean, it is, it's, to be fair, I mean, they do, they do do it subtly because at the time as a kid, I didn't really know what they were doing and stuff like that. And I think now you look at it with kind of, you know, what's the word? I mean, I can't, think, like eyes now or like yeah. you know, eyes like now this film is what? 30 years old pretty yeah, much yeah. If a lot of it more and it's that way that you're looking at it kind of like with these kind of older eyes and stuff like that I imagine though if you showed that to someone who had never seen any of these movies and then you're like so here's Nightmare on Elm Street 2 and didn't say anything about it afterwards they're going to go that's a bit gay like that so yeah uh, something we uh, touched on just before uh, we'd recorded I felt Watching this back, it's very uh, well literal deep end. Someone diving in the pool. Yeah. Uh, you're thrown in the deep end with the new cast. And yeah. normally movies, it's just like bringing them in, like oh, this new person's meeting this person for the first time yeah. and stuff. But Jesse's came to a new town. He's at a new school, but he's very friendly, pally with them all and stuff. So yeah, it's it's all. Om- Here's the thing, it's almost like a new origin, I feel. Yeah, it's... I think like, it's, like it, you don't need to watch Nightmare 1, but you could watch this and you kind of get the gist of it, you know? Yeah, you don't even need to watch, uh, like, 3 and 4, like, he's buried in the uh, car... What's it called? Yeah, 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 yeah. Four takes on right after. Five, uh, four to five. Like this one, it almost feels like all right. That done well. Maybe see if we can like start again almost. Yeah. Like I think it's very, it's a very standalone one in the franchise. Uh, it's the only one that doesn't necessarily lead on to another one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, whereas all the other ones do kind of lead on to another one. But again, yeah, you can kind of like them very easily. And like, the thing about the Friday the 13th, which I used to always love about them, whereas you would always get the Friday the 13th recap at the beginning. Yeah, because almost yeah. every like two or three, you've got a pure recap. And it was like, this is what you might have missed. And it's like, previously on Friday the 13th. And like that, so it's like you get catched up and like, so the Jason's on, or hey, you're too happy with it. Whereas, yeah, this one's completely standalone on its own. Again, this whole party sequence, that thing looks really small. I don't know. Uh, this kind of weird party sequence again feels a bit tagged on because it feels like you know, we've got to do this for the kids we're giving them a bit, a bit too much of a, a 
has to be both all over here about this guy not knowing who he is as a person. Oh look, now you're going to a party. Uh, and it's my father. Yes. Right. Uh, Bobby Orlando whispered to us. <laughs> uh, I think that's the subtitles going to be like that, that in depth. Um, so yeah, I mean it's... This is where the first... This is actually the first moment in this movie where you actually think, oh I'm watching a horror film now. Yeah. Like that. I'm, I'm watching a horror film movie. There's kids partying. Oh, people are going to die. Oh, there's Cabana. Um, <laughs> and... Jesse also does not look like he knows what he's doing. Yeah. I know. Like, his shirt is... That is his going out clothes? Jeans and shirt? Uh, a shirt with that bag though. Me, I want it for you. Um, I think it's a good time. Uh, is it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure that's what he's doing. Ah! <laughs> oh, there you go, yeah, like, here's the thing, what's your take on the pool party scene at the end, when Greg's here? I don't like it. No, 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 like, what do you think happened? Because, as we said, Freddy's slowly trying to take over Jesse for whatever reason, but we don't really know if it's Jesse almost like, this is happening in his mind, and he's got the glove and he's doing the killing? Yeah, because Jason disappears at this bit and yes. all of a sudden Freddy appears. Yes. Oh, no. Here's the weird uh, Yeah, the little uh, the leather sheets. The leather sheets. Well, I think I'm more clever. Uh, and again, can we just talk about a lot? Is it this? Is a lot of folks that we can I mean, it's that way there's... It's just weird. It's too far out of my bedroom. You spot this thing. You don't like it. I have, <laughs> I have a weird red, green, black theme in my bedroom as well. Uh, it was very much like, 80 boys I think. Um, where basically he asks Grady to watch him overnight and breaks into Grady's room and but then yeah, that's the whole thing, it's like you know, again that moment where basically he says he t- encourages him to kill himself. Yeah. And it's that way where he's like obviously telling him there's because the way he works it initially, Jesse here as well, it is like someone coming out. It's like a coming out speech. And it's that way he's like trying to tell him, oh this is oh this is who I am as a person. <laughs> also Brady has a team of tunnel post on his bedroom, I mean, come on. Uh, and basically he tells him to kill himself. Uh, when he's like giving a speech about coming out. Uh, and I gonna so I think it's time to get inside that little bit. She's waiting for you to go on it. I did like that uh, line. Yeah. Is that maybe the But then think about what you just said there. Something wants to get inside of me. Yeah, she's waiting for you. Hold on, she's going to go inside him. Yeah, there we yeah. go. Oh. Uh, um, so, again, this, yeah, this is a great, actually, this is a great, the special effects in the sequence are fucking fantastic, yes. I'll give it that. The idea of when Jesse's body screaming and the eyeball in his mouth and then just literally, Freddy literally coming out of his body. Yeah, that is one of the really best, well done. like, out of all the franchise yeah, uh, horror movies, that actually looks the best. Yeah, it's, I think it, that's the point where the effects change to... And the hero is the guy who pretty much created Chucky. Oh, ah, okay. uh, and it's just that way that so he was like, I mean that as uh, you can see the setup of the shot straight away as in like, oh they're gonna keep this with a fake body and a fake chair and with all that happening at the same time. But seeing the setup of the shot it is, it is fantastic. Uh, and it is still pretty like that and keeps all that to go and yeah. it looks amazing. Like think of something like that now, that would be fucking horrible. Like the CGI. Yeah. Do you know what? I would rather, um, as a human and as a gay man, I would rather watch Superman with a mustache. Because A, it's good with a mustache. But you could have just said he had a mustache. Yeah. You wouldn't Unless it was like scenes where he's like, some scenes they would need to like reshoot everything, others just, you know, mm, I, just, I just think it would have been cool with him having a mustache. I think it would have been alright. I think it would have made a piece of it. But, not with that what? It cost two million? Yeah. Two million. And it looks like, do you know how good it looks? Do you know what I put it in a car with? Scrocking thing at the end of oh, the movie. Oh, sure, yeah. That's hard that to see. That is what it's like. 
That's how good it is. Uh, anyway, back back to the gay story. Yes, back to the um, So, yeah. But I'm trying to think does Freddy appear at the pool party yes. until Brady dies? Is it after Brady dies? Yes, it it's after. So, yeah, I think it's very plausible to think that Jess is the one that's killed him. No. Yeah. Because the, especially the bit where the guy actually goes up to Freddy and tries to plead with him and say, what do you want, what do you want? What do you think? No, you know, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, come on, like, he's getting names on his thing. Or if it was Jesse. Somebody, yeah. somebody who came in and did the moment he was killed would be like, what are you doing? But here's the thing, like, is it really him or is it, like, is he, like we said in the shower scene, he's wearing the costume and stuff? Because, mm-hmm. let's be honest, if at the end of that pool party, you'd be like, yeah, this new boy, Jesse, like, he came to the pool party dressed up like really fucking weird right. and started killing people. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the thing that I want to discuss most. Grady's watching this happen. Is Grady asleep now? And Are we asleep? Is anyone asleep? Yeah, yeah, like, is anyone asleep here? Like, is Grady actually coming out of his body uh, possession style or is it? I think it's when, dreaming. I think it's when Jesse falls asleep that's when Freddy would take over. Yeah. I think very much this is real. Maybe, um, maybe because uh, in the first one, remember Glenn was watching over Nancy in the dream? Yeah. So maybe it's a little bit where Freddy's got them on the same playing field. Yeah. And this is just a thing of beauty. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah Freddy is literally coming out of him and that's it, that's it. <laughs> uh, like the the fake caution and stuff like the the head you're turning like and just it just carves his like yep. bo- body just like uh here's my human like here's my terrifying spreading I mean that oh, is genuinely terrifying. That makeup is it is just astoundingly good. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Like, because he did save me and he wants to take me again. In the lines of this that movie are just like. I was going right. to say, who wrote this? But there's clearly. I think there's a couple of these. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Um, there's a couple. I'm not going to be uh, like mean it, but that kind of explains it. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it is. It's. I think. Yeah, this is the one who didn't make watch the things he has tried to say. Oh, it's just all in your head, the clothes you watch, it's the glove, it's the diary, it's everything. It's all playing in your mind. Uh, it is a really weird analogy about saying what you're doing. But the hell do you want to there? He owns me. There's an honor class at the farm line. <laughs> to be fair, then, we don't really explain why the, the water starts all going. Yeah, like, there's a lot of things in it. Which a lot of things to come to. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah, the, yeah, the that's closer to my design. <laughs> so, uh, Scott Pilgrim, his thought is that mm, he wants to give you uh, superpowers, uh, being gay, makes you burn and explode some bangers. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're banging. <laughs> and flaming. Well, oh, flaming sausage, that's not really like a good analogy for days, is it? Flaming is what you call camping form. You say that they're flaming. Ah! Oh. Yeah, because if someone's really over at the camp, you call them a flamer. Uh, so all because they're the same. Um, so yeah, so. I'm trying to think how, how much money did you think this gets in the cinema box office? Mm -hmm. So, oh, it's not IMDb, oh, yeah. it's uh, the numbers you got there. IMDb is a lot easier. Yeah, it's something that I'm wondering. I think I've got that kind of thing. IMDb, suck one into the face. Okay. Yeah, for the first thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, production, $3 million? Which is quick, there's a lot to work on, mate. Yeah. It's a lot yeah. to work on. And pretty much, I would say, a good, a good two million of those were effects. Oh, easily, like, yeah. everything that was involved. Yeah. Explosions, costumes, uh, the... the end of world, kind of, like, the age, just, you know. Yeah. No, I just like, outside. Oh, shit. Yeah, Scotland <laughs> is, uh, gonna fart on itself. But we'll just sound hell outside. Um... Yeah, and yeah, a, a, good, a great chunk of that is definitely all the effects in this film. Yes. Uh, but that's a lot for a horror film. Oh, but it's it hangs, it's a lot of it, so yeah. that is, like how many things did it take the, there's a uh, Robert Engel needed for costume, yeah. like how many days to put that on and stuff. I think it used to be always just to take a bit similar to the room. Yeah, so and then they streamlined it towards the other films, like towards the later ones. That which makes why the things get softer, yeah. and it got to the point where they could do it like 3 or 4 hours. So. This was three million, right? Mm -hmm. uh, worldwide, but it does make domestic as well, so it doesn't. It's the same figure, yeah. so I'm guessing uh, America. No, it's definitely kind of something here. Okay, all time worldwide box office. Okay, okay, I've got three tries. Okay, I would say, and when it says worldwide, that includes up from now, right? Uh, I think it's only. Original release. 26. Oh, whoa. Okay. 18. Oh, yeah. oh okay. 23. 21. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Um, Actually, good mate. Uh, what's that? Like seven times? Yeah. So, yeah. And inflation, that probably now means over 100 now. Yeah. Uh, inflation. Uh, 
Because I think, was it, I think it might have been, I think that, it's one of the ones that, they were, I think the one that did the most money, and I think it's quite a random one, I think it's like the fourth one? I think the fourth one did the most money out of a whole lot of them. Yeah. Uh, because at that point, they started to obviously expand its voice and expand its audience. But, and also, Freddy's not very well. Yeah, yeah. It's nice for the Spangers in this one. Which, again, a bit of a change. It, well, that's the thing. There is subtle changes to the character of the costume. Uh, and they are changing small Which means, things. is it not Freddy? Yeah. Because that's the whole thing. It's like, is it just something... Um, it's bit, okay, he disappears and he gets Yeah. Okay. Oh, brilliant, I think, for the time. Yeah. But this is the thing. Is it Freddy or is it not Freddy? Is he there? Is he not there? Yeah. But, eh. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's. Yeah, it's. It, I mean, yeah. It holds its own. It's a good movie. It's a strange one. No one else should take one of these films that you should always watch before I watch the order. This one is. The That's one. Thing. There's no reference to it in the franchise. Yeah, you can pretty much. Like this one, I think, if you pardon the pun, you can come in with this one quite easily, but uh, it's good for if you're into film, and I think you're good for that kind of idea of like seeing it's something like, it's actually got quite an intelligent little plot behind it, because clearly it's references that they say are not subtle. Yeah. It was uh, they're not subtle, it's, it's obviously trying to tell a very different aspect of the story, uh, and it's got a weird subplot behind it. Like a really weird, not really good plot. Uh, I do kind of love it. I love it just because it is one of those films that if you tell anyone about, especially if someone who hasn't seen it in a long time, you go, oh no, it's the gay film ever, blah blah blah, and then they go, no, it's not. You're just analysing that too much because you're not. And then they watch it and then they go, yep, you're right. And it's very, very, very good. Um, but I kind of like that. So, I'll be doing that. Yeah, it's not that fun. Because uh, that way, if, cause if you're going to like, oh, it's a point five or whatever, just yeah, then. Okay. Um, I will give it a six. Mm, I, I don't necessarily think it's dreadful, but I don't necessarily think it's dreadful. Five middle ground? Yeah, it's very middle ground. And, like, it was, growing up, my least favourite Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. I would even put Freddy's Dead above this at the time, at the time. Yeah, the time but it. looking back, and re-watching it with uh, fresh pair eyes. It is actually pretty good, but there's as many good things with it as there is bad, you know. It's just smarter. It's a smart horror film. It's maybe it's, it's maybe it's a thing it's a horror film's thing. Yeah, it's not horror films at that point. Yeah, it's it's too advanced for its time and it's like horror films at that point were not about being smart. It was just a slasher. Yeah. There's a villain, here's the people that are gonna get killed. This person's going to survive. Yeah. Also, this looked like Freddy Cool. That's him, right? Yeah. Uh, I used to really freak me out about it as a kid. But, um, and also, the kids are on the other side. Uh, Freddy. What? Oh, compassion. Oh, really nice. really nice. And then he disappears there as well, so. It's so sinister on this one. Maybe they tried to reinvent the character, like, he's this powerful in the dreams. But when it comes into reality, yeah. he's even more powerful, which they kind of build upon in every other iteration. Like, uh, even in the first nightmare, when he uh, is going around the house, he gets hit by a hammer and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I would like to say if you see the word back on that, I swear. No, 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 I wasn't going to say word back on that. I would whip this out <laughs> if you see the word back on that. You're not going to call that remote. It's not going to happen. Oh, oh. I'd it's no. okay, it's no. okay, it's no. not great. It's no. 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 What do you think? It's not going to happen. But we will have to review it, you do know that. Come on, if we're going to go through all the nightmares, I'm kind of empty. Oh, oh, how's this? We'll review Jason 10 before. Jason X. Jason 10? Oh, Jason X for a reason? Yeah, X is 10. Like, you can't get some JT there. But at least it's... Yeah, okay, fine. Nope, we're going to get JT next time. We're going to get JT next time. Oh, Dr. Pepper! Yes, yes! Good shit! Just don't take these pieces. Yes. Which is fuck. Which makes me think the whole... If he's really there, he's really powerful. Yeah. They conjure up these kind of 
Like, this is the gates of hell. Yeah. And this is, like, Cerberus. But then it pulls a shot. Look at the shot, right? And then you're like... They're in the... F- it's like a share video from the 80s. <laughs> it's like... It Maybe they got a discount for it. You, it keeps this huge wide shot of this factory that's lit, like, red and green. And it's like... Where the fuck is this place? I don't know. So anyway, that's my point. Yes. Uh, watch it. I mean, it's not the best in the franchise. It's it's alright. It's decent. If you're a closet homosexual, maybe don't watch it. Uh, it might make you want to kill people and blame it on this film. Uh, just buy some porn. It's yeah. Yeah. No, don't even buy it. Just go and just play. Sorry, I'm so mad. Or just go to uh, our way station and look for it in the sidings. It's all just to me. It's all just to be porn. Porn in the woods as well. In the house is all just. Uh, but just yeah, then also porn. Just take porn up. Porn and D is from recently discovered to me, by the way. Have you ever heard of porn and D? No. Porn and D? Uh, I'm like medical doctor. But, uh, oh, but no, oh. it's not a doctor porn. Oh, but it's that way that you just type in what you're looking for in it and it searches every free porn site for you. Mm-hmm. And then it tells you this. There's a lot of tech for you guys. So yeah, you know, that's porn and D. You know, if, you're if you want to sponsor us Porn Indie, that would be lovely. Yeah, I'll actually take a sponsor from there. From Porn Indie? Yeah. yeah, so it takes you to everything. You just yeah. it's got a good search. It's like a Google Porn. Yeah, yeah it's just a point of good plugging uh, or rip to paddle key, so, you know, Porn Indie get on good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> if you want a t shirt instead of porn, like, <laughs> porn Indie. Go. That is a good one. Yeah. That's a box set. Yeah. It's part yeah. of the word box. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so Rip Paparo, uh, you can get uh, pop culture tees and stuff. I got a little multiverse bitch one from Rick and Morty uh, on Scary Terry, which is a very good rip off. I've never watched it. Oh, I'll watch, the, watch that episode. It's fun. Uh, yeah, use the code Glass and Geeks and you can take yourself 10%. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Glass and Geeks. Uh, our podcasts are on uh, iTunes, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Yes. And yeah, and go and follow Mark Patton on Instagram, the guy who's in it. He's lovely to chat to. And you can see all about his uh, documentary, Full Screen Team. Is it is released? Really it's not yet. I think it's, it's done the festival circuits. But it's, it's, he is honestly, you can chat to him about anything to do with Nightmare on Elm Street in part two. And he will answer your questions, and he is a lovely, lovely man. And you know, I think he generally looks popular as well. So, he realizes that he's a very good thing. So, that's kind of good. Nice. I highly recommend that. The game is a great thing. Well, on that note, bye. Yeah, sign off for Barrett. Sign off. It's good to have all of us. No, because it's not to do with this one. Uh, well, that was just going to be a general horror sign off. Is that a general one? Yeah, yeah. But, but if you've got a. Sign off for this one? No, I, I, I'm just saying it's out. Yeah, Scurry Pass is always a good one. Scurry Pass. Scurry Hall Pass. Scurry Pass. Scurry Pass. It's not Hall Pass. Scurry Pass. Yeah. There you go.